the Roman Church, the Guilds, and the Hellfire Club. November 2, 2020 by Anna Von writes. When I say, Roman Church, I am speaking of the pagan version of the Church of Rome headed by the Roman Pontiff. This is otherwise known by the oxymoron, the secular church. Though the office of the pontiff was purportedly dissolved along with the trust supporting its activities in 2011, there is no sign that it actually stopped functioning. Rather, it appears to have changed names and moved its operations to the United Nations storefront in 2011 and has been using that organization to promote its agendas ever since. Next, we have the guilds, the Freemasons and the Lawyers Guild, otherwise known as bar attorneys, both of which are firmly attached auxiliaries of the Roman Church. The lawyers have been functioning as the tax collectors of Roman emperors since the 2nd century BC and nothing has changed. The Freemasons are a, specialized, European guild, like a labor union, for mercenary and professional soldiers. In this way the leadership and control of the armies of many supposedly independent nations can be undermined and controlled as a larger army under the invisible control of the Masonic leadership. The guild lawyers can be recognized by their black robes of the probate court, in England, they still carry on the 2,000-year tradition of wearing white wigs. Their eternal question, who and what are you, is still their stock and trade. The Freemasons can always be recognized by their odd poses and gestures, which the guild lawyers also employ as a means of signal communications. Remember all the paintings of Napoleon with his hand thrust sideways into his waistcoat, his elbow jutting out at a right angle. You will see this same odd pose repeated endlessly in military circles, and it's not because they idolize Napoleon. If you observe the photos in the 12-part analysis of Lincoln's assassination I shared last night or bother to search out other photo archives of Civil War soldiers, you will see this pose repeated over and over again by military personnel on both sides of the Mason-Dixon line. FDR and Winston Churchill's famous, V, for victory hand gesture has a much older and more sordid history as the symbol of the horned god, Baphomet. Via the secular guild system, which includes the more traditional labor unions, the Roman Church could control the courts and the armies of the world via unseen fraternities, and so it has done, for the past 2,000 years. And finally we come to the most secular part of the secular church, the Hellfire Club, which provides access to every sin imaginable and the blackmail to go with it. Via this means the acolytes of Satan could be groomed and controlled and used for any purpose at all. Ben Franklin was a prominent and enthusiastic member of the Hellfire Club while in England, and he was not the last American to be seduced and blackmailed, willingly, as a means of obtaining contracts. The practices of the Hellfire Club, depravity on an unlimited scale, witnessed by third-party club members, so that obedience and compliance with contract terms were guaranteed, go back to before the Christian era. Whatever was taboo in any culture was embraced by the Greeks and Romans as a means of guaranteeing contract performance. We have no idea what Benjamin Franklin was required to do in exchange for his office as postmaster of the United States or for the several million pounds sterling he secured as investment capital, but if it involved satanic ritual murder as suggested by the ten corpses found in the basement of his London home, we should not be surprised. The bankers always want their pound of flesh to guarantee their investments, they usually don't care whose pound it is, so long as the blackmail is on deposit as the loan guarantee. And now you know the origin of the British pound, which can be paid in sterling or, by other means. So let's pause and consider the vicious cycle these practices generate and the power over other people that they yield. A man so compromised becomes a rising star, as his obedience is assured, while good and honest men fall by the wayside. The bankers can trust him because if he doesn't obey they will expose him as a monster, a child rapist, a murderer, a cannibal, whatever they have forced him to do to guarantee his office or his loan or whatever other favor he seeks. Just imagine what a Roman pontiff has to do to gain his seat. Against this backdrop it is easy to follow the threads of the current condition all the way back to Rome and see the evil for what it is. The fraternal order of blackmail is what connects all the corruption in the church, and in banking and in politics and in the military service, too. With such a quid pro quo at work and serving as the driving force determining business outcomes as well as political ones, it is inevitable that we shall be ruled over by the direst form of criminal scum and that our nations will be destroyed, unless unless we come out of Babylon.
unless we deprive the bankers of their power and their means. Each nation must take charge of printing their own money again and must dismantle their participation in the corrupted United Nations. These guilds have got to be policed along with the banks, and if need be, totally outlawed. The Roman Church must be subdued and converted back into a truly Christian Church, a task that rests heavily now on its own beleaguered members. We must take up our responsibility to self-govern, or destruction by madmen and criminals as the certain and logical outcome of such a system as we have now, where the evil ones rise to the top by both design and definition. Links to Anna's articles and resources can be found in the video description box. Thank you for subscribing, liking and sharing.